everybody. Welcome back to another quick episode of Return to the Queen. My name is Nina and I am your host. On today's episode, we will be talking about the verse Matthew 23, 9, which is a verse many Protestants use in attempts to dissuade people from becoming or being Catholic. When I was first beginning my conversion to Catholicism, and even to this very day, this verse is often thrown my way. Anti-Catholic rhetoric is something every Catholic is familiar with, and as a Christian, we must always be prepared to defend the faith and the truth. Peter exhorts us in 1 Peter 3, 15 through 16, to always revere Christ as Lord and always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks us to give the reason for the hope we have. So let's dive into Matthew 23, 9 and see if the verse contradicts Catholicism or if Protestants may be contradicting And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. Matthew 23, 9. A frequent criticism by many Protestants is that they believe that Catholics go against Jesus' teaching of not calling anyone father, since Catholics address their priests as father. They quote Matthew 23, 9 to support their objection. You Catholics call your priests father. Matthew 23, 9 says, call no man father. Before we examine what this passage means, here are a few different translations of this verse. So, what did Jesus mean when he said, call no man father? We know he could not have meant it literally, or else the Bible would be contradicting itself. Firstly, Jesus says in Matthew 10, 37, anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Here we see Jesus refer to our earthly fathers as father. This also occurs in Mark 10, 29. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children's or lands for my sake and for the gospel. We see in Ephesians 6, 2, Paul saying, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. The genealogy in Matthew 1 mentions a list of fathers. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac was the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah Here, and his brothers. Here we see multiple passages in which Jesus and his apostles call someone upon earth other than Christ a father, and we know that Christ would never contradict himself. Neither would his faithful apostles. Christ can never contradict himself. Only we can contradict Christ through our own methods of private interpretation of scripture. The next argument usually becomes, it's permissible to call your actual father, father, but you cannot call someone father as a spiritual title. Let's examine that claim. In the New Testament, Paul declares himself a spiritual father. He says, I do not write this to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you have countless guides in Christ, you do not have many fathers, for I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Here we see Paul referring to himself as a spiritual father. Is Paul contradicting Christ? Peter does the same thing as Paul in referring to Mark as his son. The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus, my son. In Luke 16, Jesus refers to Abraham as father Abraham. When telling the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, James also calls Abraham our father in James 2.21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? In Romans 4.11 through 18, we see that Abraham becomes our spiritual father through the faith. So, what did Jesus really mean when he said, call no man father? Jesus was not speaking in the literal sense. He was speaking in hyperbole, or else all of the above passages would be in a contradiction to him. He's not saying it is wrong to call someone in the literal sense father. Let's examine the full context of Matthew 23. Catholic writer Joe Moreau of Return of the King. Lives explains it in this way. The heart of this entire chapter comes to us in verse 12. For Jesus teaches, for those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. The wider context is as clear as day. Jesus is condemning the notion of merely desiring a title because of the perks that come with it, meanwhile remaining a hypocrite, 
inside with no care whatsoever for God or your fellow human being in need. Our Lord instructs us not to call such individuals father or teacher because it would only serve to inflate their pride and ego. Rather, he calls the leader of his church to be humble, giving us a pointed example at the Last Supper when he washed the feet of his own disciples. He wished his apostles to imitate his examples in the way he sacrificed himself, even to the cross, out of love for his Father in heaven and for mankind. Jesus here is saying that these Pharisees and scribes appear on the outside as beautiful, but are dead inside, while wanting titles and exaltation. He is condemning their hypocrisy, which is the broader context here. The 16th century heresy, Sola Scriptura, or Scripture Alone, causes us to often confuse the figurative, symbolic, and literal with each other. The message at hand is to not desire status or to be exalted by others.